one day, I believe, that the whole city will see that Jesus Christ is their Lord as well. Amen? Do you all agree? Do you all believe? One day, I believe that the nation of Cambodia will proclaim that Jesus Christ is their Lord and their Savior, and they need Jesus badly. Yeah? Do you all agree that? with that? Amen. Amen. The title of my sermon today, maybe not so fancy, but I try. <laughs> How to stay in courage. How to stay in courage. Have you, have you ever discouraged, get discouraged or something like that? Sorry, you know, my English is not so good, but maybe, you know, you try to understand. That way it helps you to focus on the word of God. What did he say? What did he mean, you know? And so I believe, you know, well, let's work together. So how to stay encouraged. What happened when we get discouraged? What happened? What did you do? Sometimes people cry, right? Some people cry. Sometimes people cry. Some people blame other people. Oh, because of him. Because of her. That's why. You know, some people just want to hide. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to be in the public. But can you imagine when you get discouraged, but somebody is there, say, you know what? Let me help you. You know what? Let me cook food for you, bring food for you. Let me take you here. Let me take you there. Let me buy you this. Let me buy you that. It, 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 it's going to be like a lot, a lot better, right? Like it'll be a lot better and easier. But Oftentimes, not like that. Let's, let's look in, you know, some scriptures. This scripture, I'm trying to, this, this lesson, I'm trying to paint some picture. What was happening in the Bible. This season, at New Life Fellowship, we encourage the people. We encourage the church member. We encourage everyone to join cell group, to be in the cell group. To lead cell groups, cell group is really important for all of us. Let's see in the scripture. You know that Jesus, he picked his disciple one by one, right? One by one. How many disciples does Jesus have? How many? How many? Twelve. Twelve disciples. So start with who? Start with Jesus. Jesus Sees the opportunity on this earth that there's nobody on this earth could be saved, could be forgiven from their sin. Only through the holy God that have no sin come to this earth and die and pay for it all. Pay for it all. Only Jesus, the holy God, pay for us all by dying on the cross. But before he did that, he made sure he go around from village to village, city to rich city, and preach the gospel. And preach the gospel. And that gospel is the word of God. That gospel is the power of God. That gospel transforms lives. That gospel lives and lasts for generation after generation, century after centuries. Because the gospel carry the power of God. Because the gospel carry the power of God. Gospel get to you. Gospel get to me. And we get to be saved. And we get to be forgiven. We get to be called sons and daughters of the most high God. And now it's an opportunity for us. We see that so many people live in this city. So many people Live in this country that don't have the opportunity to hear the gospel, to hear the good news, to experience the power of God. They can't because nobody tell them. Nobody have relationship with them. In the same thing in the Middle East, thousand years ago, the same thing. Same thing like here. But God have his mercy. He come down and he... Walk this, this earth and show people how to live a life that have relationship with God. And Jesus did. And so Jesus died on the cross. After Jesus died on the cross, then the disciple, 
Don't just keep the word there. They don't just keep the word in the temple. They don't just keep the word of God right there in the church. They take the word. Take the word of God outside of the church. Take the word to different countries. Take the word. And then, you know what? And then in Act chapter 1 verse 15, then the disciple start to grow from 12 to 120. Can you imagine? Oh, you start your church. The church with 12 people. And now your church grow, grew to 120 people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now not me alone that believe in Jesus. The same thing in my family. When I first given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, my dad said, you are so stupid. Why are you so stupid? You go to college, you get a degree, and then you give up. The old faith that you believed before, that's dumb. That's not right. But because God had power, because God had transformed my life, and he started to see that something in me is different than before. And everyone started to come in. My sibling come to the city. I take them to church. I have them experience God. And one person gave their life to Jesus. And another person give their life to Jesus. Now our whole family give their life to Jesus. My mom and my dad give their life to Jesus as well. Because the power of God have transformed our lives. This is important for us. You see, start with 12. Oh, 12. What are we going to do with 12? How can we do it? How can we change this world? How can we bring a positive influence into this world this is the vision of new life fellowship we want to bring a positive influence we want to bring heaven we want to bring the blessing from heaven to the city of Phnom Penh we want to bring the blessing of heaven to the, uh, the country of Cambodia this is what we believe and so far we get to see it happen already and we're not going to stop you see the disciple, only 12 people. And they start to meet, and then there come 120 people. Want to know the Lord as well. Wow. Their numbers start to grow. In Acts chapter 2, verse 21, 21, and people were added to the first day of the church, like 3,000, 12, 120. And Peter preached. Can you imagine? There come 3,000 people said, I want to know God too. I want to believe in Jesus as well. Please, what should we do? We want to believe in Jesus as well. Please show us. Can you imagine when you preach the gospel, when you talk to the student, when you talk to your friend, and they said, please, please, please help us. We want to know Jesus as well. What do you feel? Do you feel good? When I was in college, you know, New Life Fellowship started in 94. I go to, I go to, I come to church and go to school. People say, do you believe in Jesus? No, I'm not, you know. I was lying because I, it's kind of shame to believe in the Lord then. Not many people believe. Can you imagine when you preach the gospel? And then the gospel start to transform people's lives. And they start to say, me too. I want to believe too. Please help me. This one, this case, people, 3,000 people said, me too. Me too, me too, me too. I want to believe as well. 1,220, 3,000. And then 247. And the Lord added daily to those being saved. He kept adding. Wow, now 3,000 daily. So you start a church. Of 12 people, and then there come 120, and then 120 grow to 3,000, and then out of that 3,000, daily, daily, how many days a year? How many days a year? 300 and what? 65 now, we have like 3,000 and what? <laughs> 365 people, wow, a lot of people. Daily. 
And Acts chapter 4, verse 4, the number of men grew to 5,000. Then all those men, I don't know about your culture, in some culture, the the men they is a little proud, right? They are real a little proud. They don't want to believe in anything. They want to show. They are outside their appearance. Like I'm strong. I don't want to believe in anything. I'm strong, strong in this, strong in that. But these men, the head of the house, they gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ as well. They said, "Me too." Can you imagine? All of those men start to believe in the Lord, and then the men start to have influence. Over their families and children. And how many people? Now like thousands and thousands of people being added to the church. And in Acts 5 is 14. A great multitude was added to the church. And then the, 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 the news started to spread. Can you imagine if this, when this church. Like a lot of healings. A lot of miracles. Can you imagine when dead people carry to the, the house of God and dead people walk out of the coffin? Can you imagine? And people start to spread the news. And people, all sick people, they come here and they, they depress and whatever. They come to the house of God. They heal. They restore. Can you imagine? They start to go out and spread the word of God. They start to spread the word of God. Oh my goodness. What happened to that place? I just stood there the minute I stepped into that place. It transforms my life. My sickness. My guilt and stuff have been solved. Wow. I become a new person. I become a new husband. I become a new wife. I become a new sons and daughter of my family, my parents. And your parents... Your husband and your wife start to feel like, what did you do? There's a, there's a gentleman, he studied in School of Technology, you know, and uh, I think in the, it's closer to, closer to 2000, one of our church members. He come to worship with us. He lives into a court. It's a smart guy. He's so smart. After coming to worship with us, he start to feel, realize that, oh, wait a minute. I did not get to have my, my mom around the house. And he started to do dishes. A man, you know, in, the, in Cambodian culture, a man's doing dishes. Kind of little, you know, not, not them, not many. Not many sons want to do that. You know, after they eat, they go sit down. And his, his mom started to see him, you know, doing dishes have, around the house and stuff. What did you do? What did you do? How come? And he said, oh, I go to church. And that church, the power of God, had transformed me and made me think about you, mom. You work hard for our family. I want to help you. You see, this is awesome. People, I believe people want to help each other. Sometimes the demons kind of put some, something to block that. They can't see it. But when they touch, when they encounter God, things start to change. Those husbands, 5,000 men, start to feel like, I need to believe in Jesus. 5,000 men suddenly were added to the church. And then, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, Acts 5, 14, and a great multitude was added. And they feel, Acts 5, 28, they feel Jerusalem with their teaching, the disciple. Teach everywhere, every place they talk about it. Can you imagine? You go to the store, everyone talk about the word of God. They go to the mall, people talk about the word of God. They go shopping, they go to school, everywhere they talking about the word of God. And everywhere they start to see, oh, that person just raised from the dead. Or this person just, their marriage get to the store. This person, this thing, great thing happened to them. That person was broke, but now the Lord has restored them, you know. And this, hey, can you imagine? The word of God. Speak and preach through the whole city. The whole city filled with the teaching of the word of God. That's awesome. Could, do you believe it's going to happen in Phnom Penh? Do you believe it's going to happen in Cambodia? How many people think that it's going to happen here? I believe that it's going to happen in the city. It's going to happen in 
Cambodia. They fill Jerusalem with their teaching. The apostles teach. Now, my brothers and sisters, New Life Fellowship, if you were to add all of those members, we have almost like 3,000 people here in the city. You know, all of the uh, uh, five services, we have almost like 3,000. Can you imagine all of those 3,000 talk nonstop and teach nonstop about this word of God? And this word of God start to spread. Wow. Start to spread and contagious. Like what I just said. That word, not just the normal word. That word carry the power of the living God. And that word will fix all circumstances in people's lives. It will fix a whole society. It will fix a whole nation. The issue, I met with this guy. He used to use drug. A church member as well. When I say that, you, you, you have no idea who that person is. So that's why I say that. <laughs> that person used to use drug. He's used drug like nonstop. He said, I don't know, Pastor. When I come to church, desire, my desire of wanting to use drug, I have no more. I don't feel, I don't feel like hard to stop using drug. I feel like I could stop right the way. Can you imagine? Only God can do that. Only God can make it happen just like that because of the teaching of the word has spread through the city of Jerusalem. And then, and then the Acts chapter 6 verse 1, the number of disciples was increasing. You know, if you, if you have time, I would have read word by word, but, you know, I'm trying to, to paint the picture. The, word, the, 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 the number of disciples was increasing. More and more and more and more. And six of uh, seven, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. What does rapidly mean? A lot, right? It's so fast. Like that. 120, suddenly 3,000. Suddenly 10,000. Suddenly 15,000. Suddenly like 20, 30, and 40, 50,000 people. We got a city of... Three million people. And we only have like, you know, all the members, like almost 3,000. We have a long way to go. But if everyone start to speak, start to speak, and then you will see the power of God spread through. And so, yeah, increase rapidly. And uh, Act, 20, um, Act 21, uh, 20, 10 of 1,000 have become believers. You see, there are a lot of people, many people, thousands and tens and thousands of people become believers. You see, when God starts something, sometimes people think like, oh, it's just a small thing. But never, ever look down on the small beginning. Never, ever. Oh, it's so small. Oh, it's just a little bit. No, never. Neglect. The small beginning. But is it from God? When it's come from God, it's going to grow. It's going to grow. Going to grow. And the grow is going to be a lot bigger than plant a New Testament church that have positive influence in the society of Cambodia, Phnom Penh, and the whole society of Cambodia. It's a big vision. But when we believe and when we pursue that vision, we get to see it happen. We get to see the church start to grow. Grow here, the church here grow. The church in the countryside growing as well. So, you see, everything that healthy is growing. Believe me. Healthy churches grow to big churches, bigger churches. Healthy side groups we we'll grow. We we'll have more cell group. Healthy, um, <clears throat> um, healthy business grow to more businesses. Healthy family. We we'll grow in loving, laughing, and caring, and stuff like that. Could you imagine if tomorrow suddenly the Lord bring three thousand more people to church? Are you ready? Are you ready? 
Yeah? Are you ready? If God, God bring 3,000, you know what? The mall bless us well because, you know, people finish, uh, you know, uh, 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 the church, they go buy food, they go buy uh, clothing, you know, or purses or whatever, shoes and stuff. They are blessed. Everyone blessed. When the church grow, right? When the church grow, everyone blessed. The whole society blessed. Could you imagine if tomorrow God bring 3,000 people, 7,000 people, 10,000 people, we could say yes, but maybe not quite ready to accommodate them yet. And the worship team, oh, how many, how many services gonna, we going to play? How many services we're going to, you know, do sound, do everything? Oh, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. How? It's going to be a little bit, sorry to say, hard for us. But this thing to prepare us, if God is to bring 3,000 more tomorrow, the next day, we will be ready. The thing that we share for this season Acts chapter 2 with 46, every day, after they believe and save and stuff, every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Everyone was so excited. Everyone, let's go meet. Let's go meet together. Acts chapter 2 and 542, day after day. In the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Messiah. You see, this is awesome. When they believe everyone likes to go to church. Everyone, they want to go to church every day. So, to accommodate that, the growth, point number one, faithfully, to join the big service, the church service. They meet in the courts, temple courts. Let's see the picture here. That's a temple court. Is it, where is the chair? Is there a chair there? Is it a good chair there? Yeah, is it a good chair? Where is it, you know, it's a, it's, the temple courts like that in Jerusalem. Can you imagine like every day? Everyone just rush through and get the outside of the, 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 the temple, you know, the holy of holies in the inside. But the outside, everyone just so hungry. Everyone just come, come to church. They, they, the study, they said, you know, the, the, the temple is like they got like, they could fit like 40, at least four, uh, 50 to 60,000 people. But, you know. When they listen to the word of God, they're so excited. 30 minutes later, one hour later, they're not tired. They just stand there. But at New Life Fellowship, we got good air conditioning. We got a seat that's a little bit comfortable and stuff like that. We're not tired of, tired of coming to church, right? We're not tired of coming to church. We are excited to come to church. We are excited to come here and worship God. Those guys, they just go and stand, you know, and there's no roof. <laughs> it must be hot, but everyone just, they don't care. All they care is to meet together daily. They meet daily. King David said, uh, Psalm 81, um, 84, 1, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. If you keep reading, David just so jealous with the bird. He said, the bird. Can make the nest there. I want to be there. But these guys, these people, they just hungry to go to the temple. You know, when people get touched by God, they just want to go to church. I'm not bragging about my family, but my father. If you, you, are, you want to make him uh, mad, stop him from going to church for one week. <laughs> He's going to be really mad at you. I mean, not you, you, me, or, I, you know, his children. It's a, hey, dad, this week you don't go to church. You need to help us with, the, with our family, help his grandkids and stuff. He said, no, on Sunday I need to go to church. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to look after your kids. So he, he's excited. Before he said, he said, I was stupid that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But now he himself, he knows that God is so good. He wants to touch God. 
this is important for us to get to know that. Hebrew, you know, um, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Do not stop meeting. Encourage one another in church. It's a place. When we come, my brother and sisters, when we come, you come because you know some friends and stuff. But when you come, maybe from this week on, or you did it already, if you haven't done it yet, maybe from this week on, start to build relationship here. Come and start to connect with somebody new that you never met before. Connect it. Hey, could we go to coffee together next week? Or could we do this together, do that together? Learn from each other. Connect with each other. Go sit with uh, different places. You know, sit in the new places sometime, you know. Um, as for me, I always sit over there. But I speak, you know. Speak, I'm guilty, you know, of myself as well. You know, I always sit there with my family, you know. So I should change as well. I feel like, <laughs> so when I sit there, I always you know somebody to always sit there. Sit at a new place. And learn, learn, learn to build, you know, more relationship with more people. Look, look for new places. Point number one. When the growth come, people come to meet at the temple courts. Like a lot of temples, they meet. Point number two, they meet in small group. They meet in houses. Cell group is God's idea. Cell group is the idea from God. It's not somebody else, else's idea. It's not New Life Fellowship's idea. But it's the Lord's idea. Cell group will help you fly like an eagle. We'll train people spiritual from knowing nothing about God, no experiencing having relationship with God, to have a wonderful relationship with God. You know, in life, when you get in trouble, I get in trouble, go to church. Go to God. Go to friends that know God and have relationship with God. Second Corinthians 4, 9, uh, 7 and 9. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We have a treasure. That you are the treasure from heaven. The power of God is inside of us. Surpassing power from God. We are hard pressed on every side, but is not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This is part of life, my brothers and sisters. Life always hard time. People persecute us. People talk bad about us. People look down on us and stuff like that. But those kind of things, if we don't have a relationship with God, if we don't have the confidence that was planted in our heart, you know what? We're going to feel sad and we can't smile. And we want to give up. We don't want to continue the life. We want to give up. We don't want to do anything because we don't have confidence we don't have something that we could lean on to. The word of God. Your brothers, your sisters, your ch our church could help us. Even though we're facing persecution, hardship in life. You know, I know that all of us are smart. We don't want to share with people. But when we have a hardship, when we have a friend and share with your friend that believe. So, what will Cell Group do? Cell Group will study the Bible together. Cell Group, they fellowship together. Cell Group will break you bread and take communion together. They pray for each other. They help each other in practical ways. They know what to do. Cell Group know. And they help each other. And they help each other to be better. They eat together. 
They sing together. They brought believers, non-believers to Jesus. What would such group benefit you and myself? We will connect it with everyone else. This is important. To be a believer, connect with somebody else, that believer. And I believe you will encourage one another. Benefit us to understand the word of God better. You know, thank you for coming to church. Don't forget to come to church. But, you know, coming to church alone is not enough. You meet with one another. Help build one another up. Pray. Become a meaningful. So, oh, wow, that person. Pray for some, and God just answered their prayer. And encourage one another. It's so meaningful. It helps you to handle your stress better. When you stress, you have a hardship in life. You can handle with it better. And you can learn the way to live your life. And you can, I mean, learn life skills better. For example, I don't know this kind of thing. And that person said, no. And they teach me. In my cell group, you know, um, um, now we're going to start again. We, uh, we break for a long time. We have a business cell group. And when people come and join, and they talk about business, and they pray for one another, small businesses started and stuff like that. I don't want this one person know how to deal with, you know, marketing. And they have, okay, I can help you. I show you how to deal with marketing. And another person say, oh, cash flow, I don't know how to do that. Please show me. Oh, I don't know how to deal with my, you know, uh, my staff. Please show me. They, I mean, help one another. They meet the need with one another. And also in cell group, you know God better. To be a believer, I believe every one of us know that. Don't just live off your friend's faith, you know. Don't leave us off your friend's faith. Or your friend have the faith for you. Faith in God for you. Or if when you are sick or you need help, your friend always pray for, pray for you. Don't leave off their faith. But you have faith as well. You have faith in God personally. The reason people believe in God. Not just God is good. Not just God will provide us. But God is my God. I want to know Him personally. Because he is not just a good God. He's the amazing God. This is the reason we believe. God is our Father. We want to connect with him. We want to talk to him. Can you imagine those people? They meet in the temple courts daily. Like these people don't go do, do business. They don't go make living or anything like that. They do. But every time, like they do this, and when they make time for the important things. They do something else, but they make time for cell groups. This is important. What stop, what stop you and I from having cell group? There's nothing could stop us if we want to do it, right? If you want to do it, like nobody could stop us. I want to end you in with this one story. You know, when I was single. I saw a beautiful girl, and I wanted to marry her. And I talked to her. She kind of liked me as well, you know. And I tell my mom, my mom said, no way. You're not going to marry her because she's not Cambodian. You need to marry to Cambodian. I'm not going to let you marry to a foreigner. Oh, what should I do? But because I believe I want to go this way. I'm going to pray. I stand strong. Even though my mom said no. Let's see. Well, talk to my dad. My dad don't say anything. <laughs> and so, okay, maybe it's a good sign. And I talked to some people. Some people said no. Not going to happen. What should I do? I keep praying. And believe. Praying and believing. Guess what? Now we're married and we have three children. God is amazing. So when people want to do something, they're going to stand. They're going to do it no matter what. What stops us from meeting? 
Some people say, oh, well, we don't have a ride. No bicycle to go to this, go to that. I remember when Pastor Somebody started believing in God. He lived in um, uh, Klingum Save here. And he walked to Satya to join the cell group over there. Like what, every day? Every Sunday? Every Sunday. He walked. He walks from Klang Room Save, you know Klang Room Save? It's a, a, a mondo. On the other side, a mondo, and he walks to Satya. Maybe like at least like two or three kilometers, you know, six kilometers round trip, you know, and you walk every Sunday. And I mean, if you want to do, you do it, right? And so, oh, no place, Pastor. Oh, you meet in coffee. Dick B's is a place where you can meet, you know, and a big table and stuff. Go meet over there. A place is me, and eat, you know, drink coffee together. Some people, oh, I like to early early riser. Okay, let's go eat kutiuk together. Go eat bicycle together and study the word of God before you go to work and stuff like that. There is nothing. There is no one could stop you when you want to do something. Amen. Amen. You when you want to do something, you will do it. We will make it happen. Could you stare? Believe with us this evening. Believe that let fill this city with the word of God. Let's fill this city with a hope from heaven. Let's fill this country with the power of God. Fill this country with the hope from heaven. Hallelujah. When we keep talking, when we keep meeting, I guarantee that this church, this sanctuary, is too small. Let's pray together. Hallelujah.